doesn't remember the childhood game of wiffle ball. This baseball variation still features the familiar hard plastic bat, lightweight enough even for the very young. And of course, who could forget the perforated hollow ball, which is capable of delivering a wide assortment of curve balls. But wiffle ball is moving out of the backyard and into the competitive sports arena. And in today's game, the fields and rules are as varied as the players themselves. David Mullaney invented wiffle ball in 1953 when he designed a ball that curved easily for his 12-year-old son. A wiffle ball's weight and holes actually make it more difficult to throw and more unpredictable than a baseball. They changed the ball about four years ago and went to a heavier ball, um, which is more of the ball of our youth. And sometime in the late 70s, I believe, they went to a skinny plastic ball, which didn't carry very far and it sort of made the game a lot less fun. Going back to the original ball, thicker ball, allows you to throw it a little harder and hit it further. There's sort of been a wiffle ball renaissance, as it were, over the last four years, and I think that coupled with the World Wide Web is sort of connecting people and realizing that we're not crazy out here playing uh, a child's game, which a lot of people would uh, think. You know, for three dollars uh, for a ball and a bat, it's a lot more fun than you could ever imagine it being. Official wiffle ball rules call for six innings with five players on a team. Many teams modify the traditional rules. You need to field the ball cleanly before the infield line right there. Toss it to the pitcher, where he'll go back to second base there. Okay. Which should be the first out. And then if the pitcher successfully throws the ball from second base into the pink square, the double play is completed. Okay, but I gotta pay attention to who's on it's first. It's very complicated. Oh. The Lincoln group plays according to the classic wiffle ball rule of ghost runners. This means that no players run the bases. Anything past that line up there in front of Skimmer mm -hmm. is, um, is a single. If it stops in front of that, it's a ground out. Okay. Catching the ball on the fly is an out. Woo! None of these guys are going to run. Right? Nope. There's no running. No running. <laughs> I love this game. <laughs> yeah, the sun away. Woo! Good going. But like many of their rules, there were exceptions. Oh, they say you do run when you hit a home run. Oh, you, you get to run. run. The victory dance. With that brief introduction, it was time for me to step up to the plate. <laughs> hey, that's called for charging the pitcher. Now the pressure was on to live up to my new nickname, Jackie Robinson. I'll admit it felt a little strange dancing instead of running. But you could see how this game could be addicting. A few miles to the north, this game of wiffle ball takes on a whole new twist. No, this is not the green monster of Fenway Park. It is a one-quarter scale replica of the baseball landmark. Little Fenway is the vision of Jericho resident Pat O'Connor. Always a baseball enthusiast, Pat built his own field of dreams on a smaller scale. When the field opened on July 4, 2001, it was an achievement. Even the Green Monster's paint color was accurate. It's never done. We are always improving. It's really an infinite process of adding tomato plants in the bullpen, so retired numbers in right field, the Sitco sign, uh, and actually improving the grass and the infield dirt every year. People start to see it and their eyes light up. Kids, adults, older people, it doesn't matter. They just, you know, completely overwhelmed by Fenway Park in Vermont. If that weren't enough, just a few feet away is Chicago's Wrigley Field. Finished in August of 2007, Little Wrigley has the renowned brick wall and climbing ivy. Here, fans enjoy another major league experience where the wiffle ball rules are more similar to baseball. What is really cool about wiffle ball here at Little Fenway and Little Wrigley, it's a game I call the great equalizer. It doesn't matter how good an athlete you are or 
why you're here, when you get out on the diamond and play wiffle ball here, it's, it's all the same. Everybody is equal and everybody's here for a good reason. Andy Clark leading off here at the bottom of the fourth. Oh! Hitting the ball, getting contact, that it turned out to be a home run was very fun, very surprising. <laughs> the fact that it's co-ed, it's men and women on the football team is, you know, more interesting, more texture. Some people are more competitive. I think the men sometimes tend to be more competitive in the playing. <laughs> Community groups from Cub Scouts to senior citizens turn out to enjoy Little Fenway and Little Wrigley. The fields also play host to several fundraising events that often involve the entire community. It's a venue where you can come and actually give back to people that really need it. Welcome to the second annual Jared Williams Wiffle Ball Foundation Tournament. The Jared Williams Tournament celebrates the life of a young boy who died of a brain tumor. Jared passed away um, back in 2001, and the year that he was um, ill, we had um, so much uh, support from the community of Richmond and the surrounding area. And even before our son passed away, uh, we decided that we were going to give back in some way or another. The Jared Williams Foundation supports families in crisis. The Travis Roy Tournament, held in August, raises money and awareness of spinal cord injuries. Both events have raised hundreds of thousands of dollars with overwhelming community support. The difference between wiffle ball and baseball to me is that more people can play. You don't need a lot of space and you're not going to get hurt because the ball is made of plastic. We've played games where we've had four generations of a family out on the field playing the game at the same time and they all have fun doing it. And I think everybody that strikes out can laugh about it. It doesn't matter, you know, whether you're good or not, you can still have fun. It's not so much uh, a game of, of winning by the scoreboard, but it's winning in terms of the camaraderie and the spirit on the diamond. One-handed grab by the third baseman. Nice grab. We can't go out and play the games we used to play, with baseball and run the bases like we used to. So now we come out, bases are shorter, outfield's not as long. So it just gets us all out and bring back memories of when we were younger. And I, that's what it does for me. <laughs>